Hey guys, it's Adam here from AM Music. In this video, I'm gonna talk about six different ways to program drums in Logic Pro. Okay, so we're gonna start off with some of the easiest ways to program drums in Logic, and that way you can get started straight away. Today, we're just gonna focus on programming MIDI and using samples. Number one, Logic Pro's very own drummer. So let's set up the drummer. This is how you do it. You're gonna to go to add a new track, go to drummer and hit create. And you'll see it's made this yellow region here. And if you play it straight off the bat, you've already got a beat. So the way I like to set up the drummer is kind of go in this order. You've got the genres here. You've then got different drummers in each genre. You can then choose different kits down here and then different beats, different presets of the rhythms in here. So let's say I'm gonna do a rock thing. Let's go pop rock, Kyle. If I play it now, okay, and by default it's chosen SoCal kit, but maybe we want heavy, let's say. So we've still got Kyle, but we've got heavy kit, and we've got the same beat now just with different sounds. So that's a little bit meatier. And now if we go down to the beat preset, we can change the beat. Let's try a different one. Yeah, it's got some groove. So you can do that. You can then duplicate it or you can loop it. And you can have multiple different beats per track. You need to create a new Bluebird, you get a new region, but you can then change it to say Echo Park. So you can see it changes from. So that might be perfect for a chorus, let's say. And if you want to customize it further, you can. You've got this X, Y pad that you can move this yellow dot around and you'll see it is changing here. So I can go for a loud and complex groove or a simple and soft groove. But you can change these over here. So you can either add in, say, tambourine, shaker, and you can change the pattern. And you can change symbols here. Or you can change it over to hi-hats. So that's a great way to get drums quickly into your track like that. And if you did want to customize them a little further, then if you go to this one, convert to MIDI region, you can then edit it in the MIDI editor here and add stuff in. Pretty cool, huh? And the drummer plugin is almost like an AI tool, really, because it kind of generates drum parts for you. You can always convert it to MIDI and edit it in the MIDI editor or piano roll. Mm, piano roll. Number two is the step sequencer. It is essentially like a digital drum machine and it's an easy, really easy way to just get drums into your arrangement very, very quickly. You just click on the little boxes and it's kind of like an on or off type thing. Great if you're doing electronic music or beats. Let's create a new software instrument this time. What I'm gonna do is open up the piano roll editor with P, the shortcut for that, and go over here to the step sequencer. By default, you'll see it's all kind of got just these notes, but once we add in a electronic drum kit, so the 808 Flex, and you'll see that you've now got kick, snares, and hi-hats. So step sequencer is super easy to use, you just Just click in, so you're doing four to the floor kind of house thing. That one sounds naff. You click them on and click them off. And you can just drag over, so I can do that. Very easy, and now you've got a. So what was that, like 10 clicks? Really easy. And if you wanna add a bit more realism to it, you go to velocity here, and then you can play with the velocities. And this just adds a bit more human feel i'm just clicking or you can drag but i'm clicking so and it's 16 steps but you can change it here so there's more or less and there's a load of cool presets in here uh, So this is a very easy way of getting drum beats in Logic. So this is great for your electronic music and your trap. Um, you can also do it with the drum kit rather than just the rather than just the drum machine designer. And 
and now you've got an acoustic kit as well. So it doesn't just have to be electronic drums, you can do it with a more realistic sounding drum kit. And the step sequencer should be very familiar to people that have used Fruity Loops before. Okay, the third way, and this is my favorite way, it's the way I use the most often, and that is recording in with a MIDI keyboard and playing in finger drums. You could use it on a, you could use a drum pad as well, um, but I just do it on the keys. Because I am a drummer, I get to at least feel it a little bit, you know? And I just prefer this to using a mouse. So I'll get the basic beat in first, like and then I'll edit in the extra bits later on. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to create a new software instrument and I'm gonna to go to drum kit here for this one. Just go to Blue Ridge. Um, and I've got a MIDI keyboard plugged in. And to record this, we just hit record. Two, three, four. Okay, so we just got a little beat going there. I open it up in the piano roll. I'm just gonna quantize it. Move that there. And I like this method because it's as close as I can get to playing real drums. I can get a little bit more feel than I can clicking in with a mouse, but that's just my preference. This is the way I like to do it most of the time. And I could edit this and add little bits in if I wanted. I could put in some toms at the end, let's say. Whatever. Okay, the next way, number four, this is using samples and one shots. So you can just drag and drop samples onto your arrange page. Maybe you've bought a really good sample pack or you can use Logic's own loop browser and you can just drag and drop over onto your arrangement page. And this is actually really easy to do. The one downside I would say of this is sometimes the beats don't go together that well because they've come from like five different drum kits if you start looping them up. So, and this is why I often prefer using the drum machine designer and playing in the beats because they are all meant to sound like they came from the same drum kit. So if I open up the loop browser, let's say kick drum. But I could, if I wanted to use that and just drag and drop it in, very simple. I'd also need to add a snare to it. Let's drag and drop that in. Instant reggaeton. And this is with loops, but you can also do it with just single samples. Within Logic, they're all in loop form if you come from here, but you can access your third party browser. Or shortcut is F, go to all files. Um, I'm just gonna search for snare, let's say. There you go. And then you can just drag and drop it and you can arrange it up, but you have to get quite good at audio editing, quite quick and know where things are on this grid. This way of doing it sample by sample is a bit more difficult because um, it's harder to create more interesting kind of beats. You're just going to be a little bit, you're going to be a little bit more restricted in what you can do, especially early on, um, like knowing where to put the beats. And once you've got like a channel for kicks, a channel for snares, a channel for hi-hats, like to move stuff around, it's a bit more, a bit more difficult. But the advantage is you have a little bit more control, really. You can do a bit more to the audio. If you want to reverse one, you can reverse one, let's say. Or if you wanted to make it shorter, you can make it shorter quite easily. Or if you want to chop it in two, you can chop it into two. So working directly in audio does have its advantages and disadvantages. It's just not what I would recommend for the beginner. At least not using samples. Using loops, sure, go for it. This way is a bit more painstaking and it takes a longer time to kind of create the beats. And also I find that you have to make sure you don't just rely on copying and pasting because it's more labor intensive. I find that you end up copying and pasting a lot more, which you don't necessarily want to do if you want your beats to sound interesting the whole way through. They start to sound a bit too repetitive. If you've already got good sounding samples, then you don't have to worry so much about mixing later on. Okay, so number five. This is Ultra Beat. No, not this band. So this is an old plugin from Logic. I remember I learned this at university about 12 years ago. It's still here in Logic and you can still use it. The interface is a bit confusing and a little bit dated as well. There's some really nice patterns in here and it's also got a kind of built-in step sequencer which you can uh, make some interesting beats out of and there's a load of presets in there as well. So let's check it out. So we go software instrument, create. Let's go instrument and it is here, Ultra Beat Drum Machine. So first I would load up a drum kit. Let's go Epic Electro. And then you've got the sequencer section down here. If you turn it on. Okay. 
it can be a good starting point to get some MIDI kind of presets. So if you go to full view down here, you get like a step sequencer kind of thing going on. And once again, just click it on, click it off. You can add in a load, you can move the velocities down here. So that's quite nice. So if you then go to pattern, you can drag and drop this pattern directly onto your arrange page. And now you've got it in the MIDI editor there. And there's a load of different patterns you can use. If you click down here, there's about 10, 12 patterns. And once you've found a pattern you like, make sure you turn the sequencer off because otherwise it's going to keep running in the background. And that's annoying as click on full view to come out of it. And if you do want, you can change some of these sounds around. You can load different samples in here and you can play with filters and oscillators and stuff. So you can edit the sound quite a bit. It's just a bit of an ugly interface to look at, but it's still quite cool. Okay, and the sixth one, this is, what is this one? This is drum synth. It gives you the chance to customize some electronic drum sounds and it's kind of like dipping your toe into drum synthesis almost. But I would say it has a very one dimensional sound. You're probably only gonna do EDM with this and you're gonna to have to have multiple channels. So you've got to have the kick, snare, hi-hats, any other percussion, whatever, cymbals. You've got to have them all on separate channels which might be harder to manage. If you are doing EDM stuff, it's definitely worth taking a look at. So here it is. Um, so we go instrument. We go drum synth, it's recent, but it's there. Go stereo, and you get a choice of kicks, snares, percussions, and hats. Um, so let's go with kick, and you can control it on your MIDI keyboard. Um, and you can change whether it's a heavy kick, hard kick, punch kick, don't really like that, air kick, tight kick. And you can do that for all the different sounds. Snares, percussion, and hats and you can change things like the pitch the tone body decay volume so you do get a level of customization it's a bit like having a drum synthesis tool which is why it's called drum synth but you can kind of start to manipulate the sounds of the samples a little bit in an easy way so i think this is quite good if you're just starting to dip your toe into uh, drum synthesis but i personally don't use it too often i'm just not a huge fan and one downside is you're gonna to have to have four or five tracks laid on top of each other. You're gonna to have to have one for the, so you're gonna to have to have one for the kicks, then you're gonna to have to have another for the, and another one for the snares. You're gonna to have to have three or four channels just for your drums alone. So maybe it becomes a bit more difficult to manage. So yeah, it's just not my preferred way. My preferred way is to use the drum machine designer by recording it in with the MIDI keyboard. And if I'm not using Drum Machine Designer in Logic, I will use a third party one. I quite like Battery 4 from Native Instruments, so I use that quite a bit. And this is just six options, but there are actually many others. You could do drum synthesis in something like Serum or FM8 or, or something like Kick 2. There's so many options here. And this is only about programming. We're not even talking about recording in like a drum kit, which is a huge art in itself. Okay, so I hope you found that helpful. If you're looking to get better at Logic Pro, then head over to ammusic.co.uk where there are a load of courses. There's even a free Logic Pro course for beginners, as well as this crazy one I recorded that's about 15 hours worth of material. That one's a little heavy going, but if you want to learn the ins and outs of Logic, then I'd suggest check it out. And if you want to see more of these kind of videos, please let me know, because I will then create more in this style. If it's helpful, if it's not, tell me to do one.